Hello, my name is Henry Harrison, and I'd like to welcome all of you volunteers who are helping to fix up homes for deserving families. You're here to make a difference in the lives of other people, and I'm here to help you do it safely by working lead safe. Now, I'm just going to take a few moments of your time to walk you through what it means to work lead safe. And if there's anything that we don't have time to cover here that you have questions on, be sure to get with your project leader. You might wonder, what does working lead safe have to do with your project? Let me explain. You're probably going to be working on an older home. If it was built before 1978, it might have been painted with lead paint. If it was built before 1960, it probably does contain lead paint. Especially on the doors, windows, trim, stairways, railings, and porches. If that old lead paint is in good condition and you won't be disturbing it, it shouldn't be a problem. But if you'll be sanding, scraping, or otherwise disturbing the paint, you're almost certainly creating dust and debris that contains lead. And that can be dangerous. If people breathe in the dust and swallow the dust and debris, they can become lead poisoned and get really sick. Lead is especially dangerous to babies and young children because it affects their developing nervous systems and can cause permanent brain damage, impaired growth, and hearing loss. Lead can also harm the fetuses of pregnant women and it can cause serious health problems in all adults. Lead can be dangerous when not handled properly, but you can work safely around lead paint if you follow some simple precautions that I'll talk about in just a few minutes. We'll call them the five keys of lead safety. Before you start your work, you may want to know whether your project involves lead paint. Ask the project leader whether the house has been tested for lead. If so, ask for the results. In many cases, however, testing isn't possible or practical. So if a house was built before 1978, you must assume that lead paint is present and you must follow lead safe work practices. The first key to working lead safe is to protect occupants and their belongings. It's important to keep residents, especially children and pregnant women, out of the work area and away from dangerous lead dust. Keep pets away from the area too. Not only can pets get poisoned, but they can also track lead dust all over the house, creating a danger for the residents. Someone in your organization needs to explain to the residents why they must stay away from the work area and ask for their cooperation. Put up a sign and a barrier, such as yellow tape, to remind them to stay away from the work area. Make sure that the sign is in English and, if necessary, also in the resident's own language. If you're working outside, close to another home, ask the neighbors to close windows and doors. Explain that doing so will help protect them from lead poisoning. Of course, it's also important to protect yourself from lead poisoning. In the rest of this video, I'm going to tell you how to protect yourself, your family, and the residents you're here to help. After you've made sure the residents are out of the work area, you'll need to remove or cover their belongings. That includes furniture, area rugs, curtains, clothing, toys, and foods. If possible, temporarily store all movable items away from dust-making activities. This brings us to the second key to working lead safe, preparing the work area. It's important to have the right equipment and supplies available at the job site. For example, you will need plastic sheeting, tape, waste bags, spray bottles, wet sanding blocks, and other tools necessary for the work you're doing. 
Now you need to seal off the work area to prevent dust from spreading into clean areas of the house while you're working. Cover the floor, counters, air vents, built-ins, carpeting, and any household items that you couldn't remove. Use heavy-duty plastic sheeting as a cover and secure all the plastic with duct tape. Plastic sheeting is cheaper than drop cloths and you'll need to throw it away after the job. If you're working inside, shut down forced air heating and ventilation systems. Next, close all windows and doors to keep dust from spreading. Then, put all the tools and supplies you'll need on the plastic sheeting so you don't have to walk away from the work area with dust on your shoes to get what you need. If you're working outside, follow the same general procedure. Cover any items that can't be moved away from the work area with plastic sheeting and seal with duct tape. Cover the ground with plastic sheeting too and secure the sheeting. If you need to use a ladder outside, cut small slits in the plastic so the ladder doesn't slip. Also, make sure to protect yourself from lead poisoning by keeping dust down and working lead safe. Once the work has begun, avoid tracking lead dust out of the work area. Always wipe your shoes or take off paper booties before you leave the work area or step off the plastic sheeting. Don't eat, drink, or smoke in the work area. And don't apply cosmetics, even lip balm. If there's any lead dust in the work area or on your hands, these activities could carry lead into your body. If you need to eat or drink, wipe your shoes, leave the work area, and thoroughly wash your hands and face first. And don't forget your regular safety gear. Wear your eye protection and gloves. If you think the work will be very dusty, Wear a respirator rated to at least N100. As you begin work, remember these two themes, work wet and work clean. Working wet helps keep any dust that is created from getting into the air and then spreading. Here's how to work wet. If you're scraping, sanding, prying, sawing, drilling, or removing any painted materials, lightly mist the surfaces you're working on with water from a spray bottle. Repeat the misting frequently to keep the surface constantly damp. But remember, never spray water around electrical outlets or switches. Working clean means creating as little dust as possible and keeping it contained. Take your time. For example, if you create dust or debris by drilling or scraping, clean up immediately. Use a damp rag or tack cloth to clean up, and then put the debris in a waste bag. Don't leave dust or debris lying around. To work clean, you must avoid unsafe practices, any activity that could create a lot of dust and spread it around. Never remove paint by dry scraping or dry sanding, power sanding or grinding without HEPA dust collection system, using a high temperature heat gun or an open flame torch, uncontained power washing, uncontained abrasive blasting. Also never use a broom to clean up, chemical paint strippers that contain methylene chloride, Once the work is complete, you'll need to clean up carefully. Cleanup is very important on jobs involving lead-based paint. The rules for cleaning up lead safe aren't much more difficult than those for any other job. But lead dust sticks to surfaces, so cleaning up lead dust takes some extra elbow grease. First, pick up any big pieces of debris. Put them in a heavy-duty plastic bag and seal the bag with duct tape. Next, 
Fold the plastic sheeting with the dirty side inward and place it in another heavy-duty bag. As before, seal the bag with duct tape and it will be ready for disposal in a safe location, away from residents or children. Then, depending on the job, you may use a special vacuum called a HEPA vacuum. Your volunteer organization may provide one that you can use. A HEPA vacuum has a special filter that traps even very tiny particles of dust and keeps that dust from getting into the air. Always vacuum slowly and carefully to be sure to clean up any remaining dust. Never use a broom, which can spread a lot of dust. Next, you need to wash walls, floors, and other hard surfaces with detergent. Wash from the top down and clean these surfaces, whether you worked on them or not. Use a different bucket with clean rinse water. Be sure to rinse well. Change your rinse water often. When you finish washing, put all of your dirty rags and mop heads in a heavy-duty plastic bag and seal the bag with duct tape. You may need to double bag the waste to keep the bags from breaking. This waste should also be stored in a safe location, away from residents or children. Finally, clean thoroughly with the HEPA vacuum one more time. Now, let's talk about safely disposing of the waste from the project. Your volunteer organization will arrange for the proper disposal of waste. Be sure to ask your project leader where you should put the waste you generate as you work and after the job. Handle all the bagged waste carefully to avoid tearing the plastic bags and contaminating the property. Remove all waste from the home at the end of the project. Please don't put it in your personal vehicle or take it home to dispose of it. Once the work area is cleaned up, you'll need to clean yourself up so you don't take any lead dust home with you. As soon as you leave the work area, wash your hands and face. When you finish working for the day, remember that lead dust may be on your clothes. If possible, change your work clothes and shoes before you leave the property. When you get home, shower and wash your hair as soon as possible. And wash your work clothes separately from the rest of your laundry. Once a painting or rehab project is completed, it must undergo clearance testing by specially trained professionals. These professionals will inspect the area looking for paint chips, dust and debris remaining in the work area. They'll also take dust wipe samples, which will be tested for lead at a lab. If too much lead is found, the area will have to be cleaned all over again. That's another good reason to clean very carefully. Now, let's quickly review the five major keys to working lead safe. Protect occupants and belongings. Prepare work area. Protect yourself from dust and debris. Work wet and work clean to work lead safe. Well, there you have it. How to work smart by working lead safe. It's not all that difficult and it is very important. By taking a few simple precautions, you can do a great, safe job of fixing up a home. Remember, if you have any questions, ask your project leader. Thank you for your time and your commitment. The work you're doing is very important. And now, it can be lead safe too.